Hello guys, good evening. Hope you guys are doing well. Continuing with our general surgery revision series, today is part 3. Good evening. Noodle, definite thing. Great. Okay. So as you people are joining in, please write in the chat box. If you have any doubts, please answer the MCQs in the chat box so I know you guys are with me. Great. So, good evening guys, I am Dr. Amrit Nasta. I am a bariatric surgeon from Mumbai and I am your surgery educator on the Unacademy platform. If you wish to get notifications about the, my upcoming classes, please download the Unacademy learning app. I will be taking a lot of special classes which are free for everyone, free to attend and YouTube videos like we are taking this week every day at 6.30 pm. So today is the third class where you will be covering general surgery. On the profile you will find videos of a lot of educators like me covering different different subjects so do follow us to get regular updates about our upcoming batch courses. Those of you appearing for NEET PG 2021, a batch course has just started, please down download, please subscribe to the plus platform and remember to use my referral code that is 10 surgery. This code will get you a 10% discount. So whatever exam you are targeting, whatever whether it's this year or whether it's next year, you can take subscription. You can take 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, one or months, one month or three months. But use this code. This code will get you a 10% discount on whatever model you choose. Okay. So I hope we are clear on that. Today's class again is going to be an MCQ pattern class. Mainly we will cover laparoscopic surgery some important concepts, energy sources, general surgical concepts and little bit of pediatric surgery. That is how the class is going to be structured today. So let's begin. I can see you guys on my phone. Okay. In the chat. So let's see what you guys feel about the questions. Some more eye opener questions like signed up for you today. Okay. Great. Shall we begin? Okay. Let's begin guys. Let's see how you guys can handle. First question. All are advantages of minimal access surgery. Except. Okay, so I'm asking you exception to the rule. All are advantages of minimal access surgery. Except. Decrease post-operative pain. Deep cavity surgery is possible. Decrease heat loss. Short learning curve. Ex you should expect these kind of questions basic level questions on minimal access surgery. Minimal access surgery is the other name of laparoscopic surgery but minimal access is more appropriate. Laparoscopic means it's a type of minimal access surgery. Laparo means abdomen. Minimal access can be any of these kinds. Okay, even thoracoscopic surgery is a type of minimal access surgery. Uh, cystoscopic surgery, TURP, they are all minimal access surgeries. Okay, so most of you have answered D. Why is that? Short learning curve, isn't this correct? What is the meaning of learning curve? What is the meaning of the word learning curve? That we use in surgery. What does the word imply? Learning curve, yes. Sab loon ek saad answer diya. Time to master, okay. It is time to master or getting a control over a surgical procedure. Learning curve applies to surgical procedures. Okay. So how much time it takes? Like let's say if I have to master lap coli. Just for example, lap cholecystectomy. How many surgeries should I do with someone's assistance to say now I can do it like a experienced surgeon. Gain experience in the procedure. That is the meaning of the word learning curve. Now Obviously, laparoscopic surgery requires more skills. So, the learning curve is not short. Actually, the learning curve is long. Someone is saying 25, someone is saying 50. Answer is 20 to 25 for lap coli. But other -like procedures have different learning curves. Okay, the learning curves are different. So, let's look at what are the important advantages and disadvantages. I'll tell you the advantages first. Now, because I am taking very small cuts, understand laparoscopy means small cuts, small incisions. The most 
important advantage is reduced post op pain this is the most important advantage understand the bigger the incision the more the skin i cut the more the yeah. tissues i cut the more the pain so the most important thing most adv- important advantage is decrease post op pain because he will have less pain he will walk early because he will walk early reduce dvt reduced atelectasis right reduced atelectasis because atelectasis or pulmonary complications are because we are supine for longer after surgery if the pain is less of course he will walk early he is going to eat early because he is going to eat early he will be discharged early so the length of stay reduces i am telling you the ones which are going to be mcq okay because he starts eating early he will be discharged early he will have reduced paralytic ileus this is true huh? paralytic ileus after laparoscopic surgery is much less much much less there will be less heat loss in a big laparotomy cut the bowel is exposed the heat loss is more the bowel handling is more the ileus is more so here the heat loss will be less and good visualization in deep cavities good visualization in deep cavities for example if i have to do a pelvic surgery like a anterior resection or hysterectomy for example or a surgery in the upper part of the abdomen like bariatric surgeries they are far easier to perform laparoscopically because understand my telescope my camera can go in the depth if i have to do a pelvic surgery my camera can go in the depth and i can see and i can operate if i do an open surgery i, have, I cannot see and you know operate in the depth so this deep cavity surgery has become really easy because of laparoscopy more easy than doing it open this is where your mcq will come deep cavity surgery now coming to disadvantages disadvantages of course are there anybody can tell me any disadvantage one was learning curve any other disadvantage one was learning curve any other disadvantage it takes me a longer time to master a procedure what morel latesh definite singh are were all saying any other disadvantage new peritoneum so what why is that a disadvantage theek hai new peritoneum equipments not a big deal even in open surgery you need equipments that's okay new thorax no less visibility absolutely not you have excellent visibility the visibility is much better because here i am seeing with the camera here the view is magnified better than naked eye i can go at that point and see air ampoule very rare because you are using co2 so air embolism is not that common tell the important ones learning curve ke alawa isi pe mcq aayenge one is learning curve more important because i have not opened the abdomen because my instruments are going inside and i am not actually touching anything i am only touching with the help of instruments there is reduced tactile feedback yeah that's what dathesh is saying it's called tactile feedback so my fingers cannot go inside and feel what i'm supposed to feel tactile feedback is not there blind entry no you can do open entry also blind is not necessary so most important reduce tactile feedback other relative disadvantage is difficult to remove big specimen obviously the cuts are small how do i remove a big specimen right like say i am removing i am doing a gastrectomy for whatever reason a very big stomach i cannot remove from a small cuts a big enlarged spleen i can do the laparoscopic dissection but itni badi spleen ko main chote chote cuts se nikalu kaise so difficulty in removing big specimen and if there is torrential bleed this is the one i want you to remember if there is torrential bleed this is the main disadvantage between laparoscopic and open surgery if there is a torrential bleed means 
let's say I was doing a bariatric surgery, I was doing a sleeve gastrectomy, and I injure the gastric vessels, short gastric arteries, and they start bleeding profusely. Now the problem is, I have only two or three instruments inside, okay, and they are long instruments, it's very difficult to identify and control. On the other hand, if I was doing an open surgery and there is a lot of bleeding happening somewhere, I can quickly put a lot of mops and, you know, control the bleed and then identify the site. So, in torrential bleed, difficult to control. Anybody can tell me, if I am doing a procedure and there is a torrential bleed and I don't know what I have injured, what is the next step? Because I cannot put big, big mops. Right, I just have a few instruments inside. So if there is a torrential bleed, say I am doing a lap cholecystectomy and I by mistake injured the common hepatic artery, moini and hump, it came in my calyx triangle, open immediate, very good. So the main thing about laparoscopy is, if there is any problem, I can always convert to open. Means do a laparotomy. That is my rescue. Okay, so please understand laparoscopy is just an access. It's not a type of procedure. It is just an access. If laparoscopy is causing any problem, like I feel I can't feel the, the maybe there is a stone in the cystic duct, maybe there is a stone in the CVD which I can't make out, I have alternates wherein I can do an open surgery and then use my fingers or if there is a lot of bleeding, I can immediately convert to an open surgery then put the mops and control the bleeding. That's fine. Vasopressors are not going to stop the bleeding, right? So, I have a rescue whenever I am doing any laparoscopic surgery. Remember, if there is any complication which I can't handle laparoscopically, I can get rescued by open surgery. Okay. But these are the points on which the MCQs will come. Which of these is an advantage or a disadvantage? Like I put over your learning curve. You need to know the disadvantages, mainly. Mainly the disadvantages. Okay, new question. Never been asked. But it's a fairly common image. <clears throat> I'm sure if any one of you has entered the OT in laparoscopic surgeries, you must have seen this. What is the use of this instrument in laparoscopy? Closed entry for pneumoperitoneum, single incision surgery, retrieval of specimen, or wound closure device. Shadatesh, Niyaz, Vishaka are all saying single incision surgery. What is single incision surgery? Laparotomy. One person following the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. C maybe specimen retrieval. Okay. Anybody can tell me what this is called? What is this called? Single port. Okay. Also called as silk port. Single port or silk port. You can actually see spill how I know. You can see S I L S Sills port. It's written on it. That is in fact the brand name. Sill stands for single incision laparoscopic surgery single incision laparoscopic surgery now understand whenever I am doing a laparoscopic surgery most of the times what I do is I put one instrument from here it's called a trocar I'll show you the picture and maybe one over here one over here one over here let's say if I am doing a cholecystectomy I put 3-4 trocars. From one trocar, I will put the telescope. From one trocar, I will put one instrument, other instrument, third instrument, and then I operate. Okay, that is normally how a laparoscopic surgery works. If I want to give the person only one scar, practically no scar, because four cut, four ports means four cuts. One, two, three, four. Sometimes what I do is, instead of putting four instruments, and four trocars. I put a device. This is actually a device. Okay, it's called a single port. It's a little big, bigger, okay, a little broader. But I take an incision at the umbilicus, put this device inside, 
Now, if you can see, this device it has inbuilt three row cards. One, two, three. It has three inbuilt row cards. Only thing is, they are all going to be at one side like this. Through this, I'll put camera, my left hand, right hand instruments, and do the surgery. This is called single incision laparoscopic surgery. This device is called single port or sills port. Okay, anybody can tell me the main advantage of single incision surgery versus laparoscopic surgery. The main advantage. Answer is in one word. What is the main advantage of single incision laparoscopic surgery over conventional or multiple ports laparoscopic surgery? <coughs> what is the main advantage? Isi pe sawal Advantage, disadvantage, all those things. Cosmesis, absolutely right. There is only one advantage that is cosmesis. Because here I am taking single incision or single port. Okay, so there will be only one cut which will probably be on the umbilicus. So it gets concealed. That is the only advantage. Anybody can tell me what are the disadvantages? What are the disadvantages of laparoscope of single incision surgery compared to normal laparoscopic surgery? Yeah. What is the what are the disadvantages? There are two that we need to know for MCQ purpose. View range mobility. Okay, I will put that as technical difficulty. This is technically challenging because here. The movement is not going to be too much. All my instruments, camera are all very close to each other. So technically more difficult. Which is why not everybody does this. Second disadvantage. Compared to laparoscopic surgery. Yeah? Not open surgery. Compared to laparoscopic surgery. Other disadvantage. Apart from technically more challenging. There is an increased risk of a particular complication. What is that? Increased risk of which complication? Uh -huh. Today different people are speaking more. Shivani, Niyas, Definite Singh. Normally it's only Nurel and Datesh who speak. Today I'm happy there are more people speaking. Makes you think. I will try to keep it as simple as possible. Huh? I will not over complicate this. But please ask your doubts about these things because there is no end to how much we can discuss. What is, there is a risk of which complication? In single incision surgery. Anybody? More higher risk of incisional hernia. Okay. Because the incision that I need to put this instrument or this device through the abdomen is bigger. Bigger incision, bigger risk of incisional hernia. This, de this device, the width of this device is about 3.5 centimeters. Approximately. 3 to 3.5 centimeters. Approximately. Normal ports that I put, they are normally 0.5 to 1 centimeter. Like each of these, if I would use individually, would be 0.5 to 1 centimeter normally. So this is almost a three times incision, but because it's only one incision and I take it at the umbilicus, it gets concealed. That's why cosmosis. Not an overall length. Uh, what what device do I use for this? Close entry for pneumoperitoneum. Is kya use karta? What is normally used for this? Close entry of pneumoperitoneum. This is all basic laparoscopy. Because nowadays they ask you more of operate. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Absolutely right. It's called very needle. Very good, very good. Very needle. Okay. Specimen retrieval. Like let's say there was a very big spleen that had to be removed. I'll give you the example. Let's say there is a very big spleen I have to remove or a very big stomach specimen that I have to remove. Okay. And I have a big cut over here. So sometimes what I do, I put a device from out to in. Okay. It's like a plastic sheet. It looks like this. Okay. It goes through the incision into the abdomen. Through this, I remove the specimen like stomach outside. Okay, so it is just like a plastic sheet, like a tube, 
which goes through the incision and then I remove the stomach. What is this called? What is this called? It's like a plastic sheet or a plastic tube which just lines the incision from inside. Through that I remove the stomach because I don't want the stomach to come in contact with the skin, the subcute when I am removing it. What is that called? I have asked this many months back in one of my special classes. Kafi time again. What is that instrument called? Back bird. No, not back bird. It's called a wound guard or a wound protector. Okay. I have not put the image today because I thought I have discussed this earlier. Maybe in one of the upcoming classes I'll show you what this moon guard is. Interesting instrument. Interesting image. Hope you can identify this. This was the very needle. Okay. Where do I normally put the very needle? Where do I normally put the very needle? Remember, Veri's needle is closed technique of pneumoperitoneum. Closed technique of pneumoperitoneum. Closed means blind. Okay, closed means blind. Means I just put it blindly. It's a very small needle, thin needle. Normally, I put it either at the umbilicus. Okay, either at the umbilicus or at this area over here, below the ribs on the left side. What is this called? It is about 3 centimeters mid-clavicular line below the ribs. What is this point called? Where I, all, where I can also put the very needle. Depends on choice and indication. What is this area called where I put the very needle? Normally. Excellent, excellent. For he, an excellent answer. It's called Palmer's point. Palmer's point. Yaad rakhna hai naam. Ye sab puchte hai. It's all basic laparoscopy. So what I do is, I first put the very needle. It looks like this. This is the skin. This is the muscles. This is the peritoneum. The very needle goes through the layers. Like this. Okay. It, I put it by feel. There is no vision. Okay. This is not under vision. It's by feel. Once I know I am inside the abdominal cavity. I attach it to carbon dioxide, CO2. The CO2 will go through the various needle into the peritoneal cavity and it will distend the peritoneal cavity. That is called pneumoperitoneum. All laparoscopic surgeries begin with pneumoperitoneum. So either I do it like this, blind technique or close technique. This is one way of doing it. It's not unsafe. Huh? Even though it's blind, it's not a complication. Normally, it's a safe needle. It has a safety mechanism. Or I do it the conventional way where I see it under vision. Cut the skin, cut the subcute, cut the muscles, cut the peritoneum, look inside and then I put this instrument. What is this instrument called? This one. What is this instrument called? Put I put it inside like this. Under vision. Then put CO2. What is this instrument? Image based question. I'll give you a clue. This tells you what this is. It's a type of trocar, a special type of trocar. What type of trocar is this? It's a special type of trocar. It has these flanges with which I can hitch it. It has these flanges with which I can keep it hitched. It's a type of trocar, no doubt. But what is the name of this trocar? Commonly, Ashkal ne use karne. No, this is not sills. Sills I showed you. Sills was this. These are multiple trocars in cells. This is one. What is this called? It's not used very commonly. Commonly the trocars that we use don't have these flanges. Yeah, what is this? Trocar with the flange. So I can hitch it. Anybody? Starts with an H. I have given you a clue. Starts with an H. Corner trocar. No, it's not corner one. It has the name. It's called... Hassan Trocar. Okay, it's called Hassan Trocar. 
<coughs> nowadays they don't use hasn't trocar nowadays they use normal trocars they don't need these flanges the flanges are extra kuch kaam ka nahi okay pehle ke zamane mein they used to hitch the flange to the skin or the subcut so that the trocar remains in place not used anymore so either i do close technique of pneumoperitoneum with very easy needle or open technique where i do cut everything under vision and put a trocar that is called open technique where the trocar is put under vision okay where the trocar is put under vision okay this is a new question again what is the use of this device in laparoscopic surgery this this device huh? it's like a box sort of don't mind you can't see it three dimensionally what is the use of this device light transmission pneumoperitoneum camera or video recording aaj tak pucha nahi hai kabhi puchna chahiye this will make you understand if the person knows or has seen if you have seen even one laparoscopic procedure you will know what this is kabhi na kabhi to lab kuli dekhna chahiye humko Okay, I'm getting different different answers. I give you a clue. You can read something over here. It's been written. Some some words are written over here. Even over here, you can read some words. What is this device? Okay, all of you are saying pneumoperitoneum, but what is this device? What is it called? Excellent, excellent, absolutely right. Brilliant answer, Dutesh. It is called a carbon dioxide insufflator. It's called a carbon dioxide insufflator. Basically, this regulates. It is a regulator. It regulates the supply of carbon dioxide. Now, the hospital. has a supply of carbon dioxide either it will be in our oxygen in a cylinder like your oxygen cylinder you have co2 cylinders or the oxygen has a central supply that comes in the operation theater that supply is connected to this machine now this machine when it gets the co2 it will regulate how much co2 goes into the body okay i showed you when i am doing the surgery let's say i put a trocar okay i put a trocar to this trocar i will connect a tube which is connected to this machine like this okay now once i know i am in the peritoneal cavity i attach the tube to the machine and i put the machine on now when i put the machine on the machine will deliver co2 which will go into the peritoneal cavity and the pneumoperitoneum will be established so this is a co2 insufflator how do you identify this it's a regulator means it will regulate how much co2 will go at what pressure so you can see 15 mm of hg pressure and at what flow like 12 liters per minute so this machine will throw 12 liters of co2 per minute into the tube thereby into the peritoneal cavity and keep a pressure of 15 mm of hg if you realize 15 mm of hg is like the upper limit of abdominal pressure intra abdominal pressure Little on the higher side, so it keeps your intra-abdominal pressure, whatever you want, at this level regulated. Understand, this is a regulator. It's not a carbon dioxide source. It's not producing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is coming from the hospital, either in a carbon dioxide cylinder or the there is some hospital source, some pipeline. This is a carbon dioxide regulator. We call it insufflator. It insufflates the abdomen. So what is it doing? It is helping you create the pneumoperitoneum. I hope you know why CO2 is used, not O2, not uh, air. Why CO2 is used? Yeah, why why CO2 used? Why not use air? You can use air also, right? What's the big deal? Why do we prefer CO2 as a pneumoperitoneum gas? <coughs> Yes, ये तो कभी ना कभी पूछा होगा आई एम श्योर 
so important advantages of co2 yeah first thing is easily excreted okay easily excreted and second is it is non conducting or non combustible current will not get conducted there will not be any combustion right so when i breathe the co2 gets excreted so it will not stay in the body for a very long time it will not cause toxicity reduce risk of air embolism because co2 gets re released very fast right so non conducting non combustible easily excreted light transmission is given by what what is the device through which i get light transmission so one is co2 other is i need to throw light inside the abdomen so that i can see inside i need two things for that for light one is something that looks like this i have a picture of that don't worry okay to which i attach light okay the light will go inside the abdomen and it will be visualized so what is this called which throws the light and what is this called through which i get all the visual feedback so there are two devices i need dono ki maine picture rakhi what is the first thing and what is the second thing mm -hmm. i'll show you the picture so this is called a light cable you can make out from the gray color universally it is gray and this light cable is attached to a device called a telescope this is the most important part telescope this telescope is attached to the camera so there is a camera machine okay over here the light cable will be attached and this will go inside the abdomen now the light cable will illuminate the tip okay so i can see whatever is happening inside and whatever it sees is going to go into the camera which will be connected to a tv so i can actually see what is happening inside this device is called telescope and the telescope is attached to a camera and it is attached to a light cable so telescope has two attachments one is the light source and one is the camera or the optical system same in endoscopy absolutely right even in endoscopy it's the same all endos laparoscope is a type of endoscope okay all endoscopes whether it's a laparoscope or whether it's upper gi endoscope colonoscope cystoscope they all need to have an optical system fiber optics and a light system this is the very basis of all endoscopy uske bina you can't see if the light cable is not working only the optical system is working it will be like operating in the dark you will see like you are operating in a dark room what you are seeing with me today is because of camera and because of light if i switch off the light of my room you won't be able to see me laparoscope telescope same thing no see it's not the same thing laparoscope telescope is not the same thing lapro telescope is a broad term okay tell us this is a telescope which laparoscopy is a technique there is laparoscope there is thoracoscope there is arthroscope there is cystoscope they are all approaches okay they are all approaches the device for all of these is called telescope telescope is the device laparoscopy means using a telescope into the abdomen for thoracoscopy using a telescope into the thoracic cavity something like that okay so understand these are just approaches this is the device it's called a telescope there are different types of telescopes obviously for different procedures based on the axis the dimensions the width okay in laparoscopy the telescope that we use the width of this is 10 mm 10 mm 5 mm normally okay that was also the size of my trocar because i told you through the trocar will go my telescope so that was the size of my trocar 
thoracoscope and laparoscope you can use the same endoscopes arthroscopy when i go into the joint i need a much smaller endoscopes okay so they are smaller they may be 3 mm 3.5 mm cystoscope also has to go through the urethra smaller principally they are the same optical system light system and something to distend some something to distend or insufflate this is the premise of all endoscopy even upper GI endoscopy it it throws gas inside so that the stomach distends when i see inside this is the premise of all endoscopies okay please remember this there has to be a camera system light system and insufflation system iske bina no laparoscopy or endoscopy is possible now you will think when we did TURP when we did TURP why did we get water intoxication because the insufflation in TURP was not CO2 it was distilled water so we kept putting distilled water into the bladder some of it got absorbed he got water intoxication TUR syndrome because there the insufflator was water because in bladder I am not going to throw air right bladder may be air cube dalo one in bladder I use yeah N2O is is it used nowadays N2O or H2O N2O is what nitric oxide nitrous oxide in laparoscopy it is CO2 okay in laparoscopy it is CO2 normally but you can use air even in endoscopy you can use air no problem okay little bit about energy sources we need to know energy sources of course i am asking you the incorrect statement about energy sources in surgery now whenever i am doing any surgery for hemostasis i use some instruments some devices they are called energy sources like you have monopolar you have bipolar okay they are electrical energy sources electrical similarly you have ultrasonic energy sources their intent is hemostasis acha monopolar sources are not safe kya tum log bol rahe ho and uh, new bipolar devices can coagulate and cut both bipolar se cutting bhi hota hai kya bibi ha bolo with bipolar devices i can coagulate and cut are you sure or they are only coagulating oh dangerous 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 okay 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 blue say coag yellow say cut is that in bipolar or that is in monopolar what you are saying that is in bipolar or monopolar <coughs> oh pooja is saying yes sir oh 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 okay 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 don't worry i will show you so monopolar devices require patient return cautery padding this is absolutely correct i'll show you the picture what is a monopolar energy source it's very simple energy source we are talking about electrical energy electrical energy ha ah, bipolar only coagulate to so, tumne kaise bola ye coagulate and cut both kaise bola then this should be wrong na तो गड़बड़ हो गई तुम तो बहुत बहुत बोल रहे हो ओके सो इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी वेदर आई यूज मोनो और वेदर आई यूज बाय व्हाट इज इट डूइंग इट्स वेरी सिंपल देयर इज एन इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी सोर्स इलेक्ट्रिसिटी व्हिच विल कम इनटू माय इंस्ट्रूमेंट नाउ व्हेन दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट कम्स इन कांटेक्ट विद द स्किन और द टिश्यू द इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी gets converted into heat this heat causes coagulation this coagulation causes clotting and this clotting causes hemostasis 
ओके आई एम सेइंग इट इन अ वेरी 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 सिंपलीफाइड मैनर इट्स नॉट दैट सिंपल सर हार्मोनिक डन बोथ कोएगुलेट एज वेल एज कट हार्मोनिक इज नॉट अ बायपोलर माय डियर हार्मोनिक इज अल्ट्रासोनिक आई हैव आस्क्ड यू अबाउट बायपोलर न्यू बायपोलर डिवाइस हार्मोनिक इज नॉट बायपोलर हार्मोनिक इज अल्ट्रासोनिक मैंने अल्ट्रासोनिक थोड़ी पूछा एनीवेज दैट क्वेश्चन विल गेट आंसर्ड डोंट वरी so in simple terms electrical energy in both monopolar and bipolar at the tip of the instrument gets converted into heat which will cause coagulation which will cause hemostasis now the problem is in monopolar it's a circuit electricity is a circuit to complete the circuit the current as it comes in contact with the body it starts spreading inside the body it's electricity it will spread now this electrical energy has to find a way out okay it has to find a way out the way out is this patient return pad okay this pad is connected back to the machine so the electrical circuit gets completed like this it's a circuit the circuit gets completed heat maximally generated here at the point of contact but the current will still go to the rest of the body it has to go back or uh, anybody can tell me if i don't use this patient return electrode what will happen if i don't use it to kya hoga is it a big deal is what i'm trying to ask you if i don't use a patient return electrode then what will happen yeah shoot bully sometimes you forget you know before the surgery you are arranging the things you are running around you forget to put the patient return pad you start the surgery you don't realize patient is in anesthesia won't work why why won't work of course it will work are yahan se to current ja hi raha hai na circuit complete nahi ho raha par current to ja raha hai na if i put my finger okay or if i put a metallic object into the switches in the house ऐसा नहीं है कि जब तक मैं स्विच ऑन नहीं करूंगा तब तक करंट नहीं आएगा शॉक टू सर्जन नो सर्जन को क्या होगा सर्जन इज ओनली होल्डिंग दिस दिस इज अ प्लास्टिक कवरिंग ही वोंट गेट अ शॉक सर्जन येल्स नो माय विल सर्जन येल यार सर्जंस येल ऑल द टाइम इनप्रॉपर्ली प्लेस्ड लीड्स टू बर्न्स ओके 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 सुरेश हैज ट्राइड टू से समथिंग अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड इलेक्ट्रोक्यूशन में ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता इतना बोम्बास्टिक नहीं है अंडरस्टैंड इट्स नॉट सो बोम्बास्टिक द एनर्जी लेवल्स फ्रॉम दिस आर नॉट वेरी हाई द वोल्टेज द वोल्टेज दैट दिस जनरेट्स इज 30 वोल्ट्स 40 वोल्ट्स दैट्स नॉट अ लॉट दैट्स लाइक डोमेस्टिक देयर इज नो ब्लास्ट इन टिश्यू ओह दिस इज नॉट इंडस्ट्रियल करंट ओके इट्स अ वेरी लो वोल्टेज करंट सो व्हाट विल हैपन आई टोल्ड यू द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विल एंटर द बॉडी it tries to find a way out now if i have not put this patient return electrode if i have not put this patient return electrode electricity still has to find a way out it goes to the earth earth means it has to go down so what happens most of the times is it goes through the body okay it goes through the body on to this table on which the person is resting and then through the table it will go down now the problem is this table is going to be a leather table or a plastic table it's not a conducting table so wherever it is exiting it will generate a high amount of current so at the pressure points ischemic heel calf neck occiput wherever are the pressure points where the body is in contact there there will be high heat generation and the patient gets burns so where does he normally get burns buttocks back calf heel in these areas they are because of improper patient return electrode setting if the electrode setting is there all the energy will go over here and it will come out no burns कुछ एक्सप्लोजन नहीं होता है इलेक्ट्रिक्यूशन एक्सप्लोजन ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता वॉट यू गाइज आर हैविंग अ वेरी वाइल्ड इमेजिनेशन ही गेट्स बॉर्न ऑन द बैक साइड ऑफ द बॉडी सो नेक्स्ट टाइम यू विल गेट एन इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आई एम प्रिडिक्टिंग दिस दे विल गिव यू अ सिनारियो 
patient was undergoing some open surgery, some long surgery. Okay, and monopolar current was used. They will give you the clue, and then they will give you post-op, and they will show you his backside, and he will have burns in the gluteal area, area of contact. They will show you burns in the area of contact, gluteal area, and they will ask you what is the cause. And they'll give you some nonsense options. One of the option will be improperly placed patient return electrode. That will be the answer. If this is not there, current will exit from wherever it can. And because it is not going back to the machine, it is going on the table, which is a non-conductor. Heat generated will be a lot and you'll get burns. Are we very clear on this? You get burns at the back side. Front side many yoga because the current has to go back. It has to go to the earth. This is the principle of all current. It has to go to the earth. Okay. This is monopolar. Sounds a little complicated, but it's not. It's very elementary physics. Other thing is about what was asked in the question. If the person has a cardiac pacemaker, I told you the current is going through his body. Can we reuse cautery for another surgery? Of course, it has to be sterilized. You can sterilize and use it. Ideally not. But if you sterilize it, you can reuse it. Not one time use. So, if he has a pacemaker, now understand pacemaker is an electric device. It generates pace when the heart undergoes in some abnormal rhythm. Okay. Rhythm is what electrical impulses in the heart. So, what happens if the current of monopolar goes through the body, it will hit the pacemaker. It will stimulate the pacemaker. The pacemaker will not know what is happening. Where are these impulses coming from? Okay, where are these impulses coming from? So because the impulses are coming randomly, the pacemaker will malfunction. Which is why in someone with a pacemaker, monopolar devices should not be used. They are unsafe. Because the current is going through the body, it will stimulate the pacemaker. Okay, it will stimulate the pacemaker. <coughs> so that was about monopolar. Now coming to bipolar, what is the basic difference between bipolar and monopolar? In bipolar, bipolar, okay, there are two prongs. That monopolar had a single prong. Okay, it had a tip. Then the current went through the body. One is the emitting source. One is the return source. So the circuit is together. So from let's say this wire, the current is going to come. We will discuss like sure. Don't worry. Don't worry. You will discuss like sure. The current will come like this. Okay. It will enter one of the prongs of the instrument. Okay. One of the prongs. There you will have heat. Okay. Here you will have heat. The current will enter into the body. Now the second prong will take all the current back and return it to the machine. So the entire circuitry, in simple words, the entire circuit, the exit and the return is within the prongs of the instrument. You have no patient flow. The current is not going to enter the patient's body. It will enter from here, exit from here. Uh, since it is not going through the patient, what do I not need in a bipolar circuit? What is not required? Yeah, what is not required in a bipolar circuit? Yeah, what is not required? Uh, some of you are asking how to sterilize cautery. Ideally, cautery should not be reused. The tips should not be reused. The machine is the same. Ideally, the tips are one-time use. But if I want to re-sterilize, which it should not be, if I want to re-sterilize, I can do it with chemicals. I can use ethylene oxide, plasma sterilization. There are a lot of ways of doing it. Don't autoclave it, is what I am saying. Autoclave mat karna. Okay, it's not autoclavable. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Here, no patient return electrode, no patient return pad. This is the main difference. This is going to be safe if you are using pacemakers, safe in pacemakers, because the current is not going only into the body. Safe in pacemakers. This is the main difference. 
the only problem here is the settings only allow me to coagulate this is going to coagulate only it will not cut so bipolars conventionally only coagulate they don't cut so the tissue gets coagulated between the prongs now if i have to cut it i have to use scissors so it's a two step process first coagulate take scissors cut in cautery which was monopolar the same cautery can coagulate also and cut also that is not possible in bipolar but advanced bipolars i'll show you what are advanced bipolars or newer bipolars they have double function coagulation and cutting because they have a blade inside so once the coagulation is done it has a inbuilt blade which will come in front and cut the tissue also okay that is the advantage of new bipolars so new bipolars can coagulate and cut both old did not and yes they show better vessel sealing than monopolar so i can coagulate much larger vessels with bipolar what is the width of the vessel which can be ligated or sealed through bipolar yes anybody what should be the diameter maximum diameter of the blood vessel which can be sealed through a bipolar safely sealed through a bipolar means can i bipolarize let's say splenic artery and say okay end of the story can i bipolarize renal artery or it can only you be used for smaller arteries very good answer is vessels of diameter up to 7 mm up to 7 mm the vessels can be safely bipolarized then i don't have to like it just bipolarize that much coagulation that much hemostasis is possible see so many mcqs on just one concept of monopolar bipolar okay usi baat pe identify this device is it a monopolar energy source bipolar energy source ultrasonic or combined this is again a new question never been asked but now you understood right what is monopolar what is bipolar right what is this i have shown you the tip also is it monopolar bipolar ultrasonic or combined we will discuss what they are from these four options at least one option you should eliminate up front ek option to seedha seedha out hona chahiye सोचने की जरूरत ही नहीं है सम सी नो बडी फॉर डी कंबाइंड थैंक यू सुरेश वेरी गुड सुरेश हेज गिवन टू आंसर बी बी डी बी सुप्रित एंड पूजा सिंह सी यस वॉट आर नोरेल विशाखा एंड दतेश वॉट आर यू सिंग डेफिनेट सिंग अर्दिंग पैड What are your answers, sir? D B लग रहा है. नहीं नहीं पर exam में एक ही चुनो चुनोगे ना. C B और D दोनों answer नहीं. This is not P G I exam. You can give two answers. You can give only one answer. So what is your one answer? It's a new question. It's never been asked. I believe most of you can eliminate monopolar because in monopolar it's a single tip instrument. here you can see there are two tips two prongs right there are two tips so it's a fork instrument to monopolar to nahi hai seedha seedha monopolar is out doubt is is it bipolar is it ultrasonic or is it combined okay that is the doubt ultrasonic also the trade name trade name i'm telling you what some of you called was harmonic okay harmonic is it harmonic is what your question is is it ultrasonic or is it not now understand what is the basic difference between bipolar and ultrasonic i'll show you the picture then you'll understand then you'll appreciate what is harmonic harmonic works on the principle of ultrasonic Ultra, ultrasound means what this blade that you see this one which looks metallic 
it looks metallic okay that is the active blade active means what when the button is pressed when i press this button ye jo blade hai it starts vibrating okay at an ultrasonic speed okay ultrasonic speed more than 20000 can't hear it ultrasonic or suprasonic it starts vibrating i can't see it and i can't even hear it starts vibrating now because it is vibrating at such a high speed when i touch it to tissue the ultrasonic waves or the vibrations get converted to heat and you know what heat will do heat will do hemostasis okay heat will do hemostasis this is what an ultrasonic energy source is it is also a energy source for hemostasis i told you what an energy source is hemostatic device this is the same thing only thing is here it's not based on electricity converting to heat it is based on vibrations converting to heat ye jo part hai this is non vibrating then why do i need this part if it's non vibrating anybody ye kyun chahiye mujhe this part what is the need for this if it's non vibrating why do i even need it yeah what is the role of this part this is the active this is the non vibrating inactive part kyun chahiye mujhe iski koi zarurat hai kya yeah see here. the real work is done by this the active blade any role of this absolutely right excellent excellent it is for gripping it is for gripping understand this will just go through the tissue it will coagulate the tissue up front like a monopolar this is like a monopolar but this will help me grip the tissue so it gives me a more definitive hemostasis because vessel will be like this na okay aise hogi vessel we have vessel ke upar ye thodi is chala dunga i have to go all around the vessel grip it and then make it vibrate so then it will vibrate and then it will coagulate so the upper part the inactive part it is the mobile part this is the only part that moves okay it moves the active part is fixed woh hilega bhi nahi it will be where it is so now get things in perspective active blade gets vibrations it when you touch it it generates heat so the active blade gets hot the inactive blade has this coating it's coated with teflon because mujhe nahi chahiye iski heat is pe jaye kyunki fir iski heat dissipate hogi okay so that is why it's inactive and it is teflon coated basically insulation coated this will do both sealing and cutting both are possible can it be used in someone with pacemakers pacemaker can i use pacemaker yes or no safe to use in pacemaker or not now you understood the circuitry of this can i use it in someone with pacemaker safe or not anybody for no very good sure sir thank you yes you can use why you can use because there is no electricity there is no electricity it's only vibration vibration body mein jaane se paste nahi karo kuch nahi hoga right this is harmonic now look at this again does it look the same does the tip look the same mm-hmm. is this harmonic is this ultrasonic ab baji ghanti this is not ultrasonic you know how ultrasonic is this will be the active blade this blade will be mobile it should have teflon coating which it does not this is not ultrasonic this is new bipolars these are advanced bipolars anybody knows the name of any advanced bipolar company name advanced bipolar anybody knows the name like this is harmonic bipolar ka bhi naam hai anybody knows the name of advanced bipolar lapro bipolar okay it, these are laparoscopic only but 
the name like this is called harmonic what is this called the trade name liga sure excellent liga sure excellent answer there is liga sure there is n seal they are just names okay they are these names are there in melee that's why i'm telling you so you have liga sure you have n seal they look exactly like this okay but now you got the gist of it there is something called combined bipolar and ultrasonic but that they will not ask you because you cannot differentiate it they look the same okay they look the same there is something called ad combined not very commonly used what is the name of this combined bipolar plus ultrasonic trade name yeah trade name combined bipolar with ultrasonic ka trade name kya hai anybody it's there in belly belly mein diya hai just a liga sure name is given iska bhi naam diya it's called thunder beat okay it's called thunder beat just telling you the name it's a trade name the principle of thunder beat is combined but normally used it's not very commonly used that's why i didn't put the picture i want you to remember harmonic versus advanced bipolar ka difference that is what i want you to remember that is the most important part okay again important question important question what is this device important question what is this device is it an open linear cutter laparoscopic linear stapler deep cavity stapler or circular stapler important question ah huh? uh, these kind of questions if they come in the exam they are ex you are expected to get them correct okay like i would expect at least 50% to get this correct 50% strike rate oh wow a b c d sare ke sare option ho gaye nishan says a pooja says b wow datesh says c and definite singh says d wow this means the question is an appropriate question it means it is a i was telling this yesterday discriminating question sare options select hue means the question is correctly framed and i can still see the confusion pooja is changing her option oh my god thank you pooja you changed the answer from b to a why would you do that you will hate yourself for doing what you just did you know why because b is the correct answer oops exam mein aise hi hota hai go with what your instinct tells you okay jo tumhare instinct ne tumko bola it will most of the times be right most of the times avoid changing your answers as much as possible unless you have clearly deduced the answer or made a marking error otherwise don't change your answer your instincts will mostly be right okay what are these staplers or cutters see linear stapler and linear cutter don't get confused by the names they don't mean anything different principally they are the same i am only trying to differentiate open and laparoscopic uh just tell me principally when i am doing laparoscopic surgery and i am using a stapler will i need a long stapler or a short stapler i am talking about the length of the instrument oh i do this all the time yes everybody does it in laparoscopy i need longer staplers or i need shorter staplers where i have to go inside and staple the bowel will i need a long instrument or a short instrument in length long Does this look long or short? Look at the handle over here. It looks long. So how can you call it open linear cutter? Open में तो होना ही नहीं चाहिए था। Okay. So I will show you what a circular stapler is. I have a picture of this and how to identify deep cavity stapler. It looks similar, but the tip is not like this. Deep cavity stapler का tip is like this. It has a rectangular tip, and the handle is over here. the tip is rectangular okay it's not a straight tip this is straight i have just curved the tip but the tip in a deep cavity stapler is rectangular okay it is a rectangular tip 
is what I want you to remember. It's not a straight gun. It has to go in the de depth of the cavity and then staple. That is a deep cavity stapler. This is a linear stapler because it is straight, linear. Okay. It's a straight stapler, but it's used in laparoscopy. This is a circular stapler. How do you identify a circular stapler? This will tell you it is a circular stapler. This. What is this called? This is the hallmark of circular stapler. And they will show you this. Handle vandal ki chinta mat karo. Handle shaft, forget about that. Look at the tip. What is this? They may even show you a separate part. They may remove this and show you if they are very kind. It looks like this. It is a two piece device. This part is separate, this part is stapled. Separate. No, it's not called a grasper. You can see what this is. What does it look like? Piston? No, it's called anvil. Okay, it's the anvil. So this circular stapler is used in hemorrhoid surgery. Yes, it can be used in hemorrhoid surgery also. Absolutely right. Staple in hemorrhoidopexy. You can use this. The dimensions are different, but it is a circular stapler only. But the dimensions are different. Okay, so yes, this anvil. It's like this. It's detachable. Okay, it's detachable. This is the hallmark of a circular stapler. It is not there in this image. There is no anvil over here. This looks like a normal stapler cartridge. So that was your circular stapler. This is the linear cutter or linear stapler which we use in open surgery. You can see how This is the handle of the instrument. This is the cartridge of the stapler. In between this, I staple. What does this green color, blue color signify? Anybody? <clears throat> what does the green color and blue color signify? Yeah. What is this green color? What is this blue color? So understand, whenever I use staplers, just like I use staplers in if I want to staple paper, I use pins. So these are nothing but stapler pins or they are called as stapler cartridges. Okay, they are stapler cartridges. So once I have fired one cartridge, I put a new cartridge. So the same device, I put different, different, different cartridges. After I keep stapling different, different, different tissue. The cartridges are having having different color. Like this is blue, this is green. This is blue. This that you see, this is purple cartridge. So it's a lot of color coding with the cartridge. How a stapler works? I'm telling you how any stapler works. Even in real life, how a stapler works. Stapling means two surfaces have to be brought together. Let's say this is one surface. Let's say this is the other surface. And I have to staple the two together. Now when I'm stapling, the staple you must have seen paper stapler. How does the paper stapler look from the side? It looks like this, doesn't it? And it has different rows of pins. It looks like this. It is C-shaped, sort of. When I fire the stapler across the paper, it goes like this. Then it strikes the other surface. You must have seen the other surface. And it gets a shape like this. So the rectangular stapler, when I fire it, it becomes like a B. It becomes like this. And the two surfaces come in between. As you see, stapling. Paper staplers work like this. Similarly are these staplers. They work the same way. The principle is the same. One side where I have the cartridge, the pins are going to be released. From this side, the pins get released. On the other side, that is the receptive side, the pins strike and they form a B. Every pin will form a B and the two surfaces get stapled. That's how a stapler works simply. Even these staplers work the same way. All staplers work the same way. In this circular stapler, the receptive surface is on the anvil. 
यहां से पिन आएंगे और एनुअल पे लग के डी बनेगा ऑल स्टेपलर आर लाइक दैट ओके सो दे हैव टू फॉर्म अ बी नाउ अंडरस्टैंड इफ आई एम स्टेपलिंग टू थ्री शीट्स ऑफ पेपर आई यूज माय नॉर्मल पिंस इफ आई एम स्टेपलिंग अ वेरी बिग बंच लॉट ऑफ शीट्स देन आई कैन नॉट यूज माय नॉर्मल पिन बिकॉज़ इट्स गोइंग टू फॉल शॉर्ट सो व्हाट डू आई यूज I use those big pins, you know, जो जीरोक्स वाले शॉप्स में होती है बड़ी वाली स्टेपल पिन इट हैज अगर स्टेपल हाइट सो इट विल स्टेपल अ वेरी बिग बंच ऑफ शीट्स दैट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ब्लू ग्रीन पर्पल द डिफरेंस इज इन द लेंथ ऑफ द स्टेपलर दिस पार्ट विच इज कॉल्ड द स्टेपल हाइट इफ द टिश्यू इज वेरी थिक आई कैन नॉट यूज छोटा सा स्टेपल हाइट आई नीड अ बिगर स्टेपल हाइट समथिंग लाइक दिस to staple a bigger or thicker tissue are we very clear on this so the different cartridges blue green there is gold there is black there is purple they all vary in staple heights so i will use blue if i am stapling thin tissue like small bowel i will use green if i am stapling thick tissue like stomach stomach is thicker than small bowel much thicker so the different different cartridges vary on the staple height are we very clear on this once you understand this the whole world of stapling devices in surgery you will be able to correlate with the normal stapler pins the ones that we use in the house they are very small but a xerox machine who has to staple a lot of papers a shop they use those bigger staplers same thing over here cartridges are different Are you very clear on this? Okay. Last question of the day. Identify this. What is this interesting looking thing? Is it an ESWL machine? Mohs micrographic surgery device. Is it a loop for vascular anastomosis or is it a robotic console? Sir, the pins get absorbed over time. No, the pins don't get absorbed. The pins are made of titanium. Like in orthopedic implants, they are also made of titanium, so they remain. But nothing happens. Titanium is not MRI. Uh, it's MRI compatible. Titanium is MRI compatible. I taught this in my orthopedic class. Yes, very good. So this device, it's none of these. Okay, this is a robotic console. या डा विंशी रोबोटिक कंसोल एक्सलेंट नीचे की स्लाइड दिख गई थी ओ वॉश इवन इफ नहीं दिख गई थी बट स्टिल यू शुड बी एबल टू आइडेंटिफाई हाउ डू यू आइडेंटिफाई दिस रोबोटिक कंसोल आई सॉ द आंसर आई डोंट नो दिस एक्चुअली ओके नाउ यू विल नो दिस एक्चुअली राइट सो वॉट इज अ रोबोटिक कंसोल अंडरस्टैंड वेन आई हैव टू डू अ रोबोटिक सर्जरी दिस इज अवे फ्रॉम द पेशेंट ओके दिस इज अवे फ्रॉम द पेशेंट दिस इज वेर द सर्जन विल सेट So when the surgeon does the surgery, he sits on this console. How do you identify this? This is where he will see. These are his eyes. So he goes and looks inside there. This is how he controls. These are the hand-operated controls. So he holds the robo over there and he operates it. What are this? What is all this? Pyramid. What is all this in the foot? What is this? and what is this yeah what is this first thing the two black paddles what are they yeah the blue and uh, yellow obviously this is energy source this is energy source yellow is going to be cutting blue is going to be coagulation one will be monopolar one will be bipolar of course one will be mono one will be bi what is this you can see plus minus or something basically what is this what is he controlling with this with his left foot this is your camera control okay this is how he controls the camera the camera is controlled with the foot okay so if he wants to go inside he presses the foot pedal and maneuvers the camera now this is where he sits this is where the surgery actually happens this this these are the robotic arms 
these are the robotic arms. So this is the patient. Just like laparoscopic surgery, first the ports have to be put. Just like laparoscopic surgery, first you put the ports, the trocars, depending where you want to do the surgery. Then you connect it to the robotic arms. Then the arms are going to be connected. Okay, this process is called docking. You dock the arms. Docking means the arms are now going to be synchronized with the console. So, whatever the surgeon does over here, away from the patient, the movements will happen over here on the robotic arms. This is called master slave principle. So, here the surgeon controls, movements happen over here, and the surgery is done. So, surgeon is not sitting next to the patient, means he is not operating manually. He is operating away, which means he doesn't have to wash up and all those things. But someone has to put the ports first. So his assistant goes and puts the ports. Surgeon sits on the console and then he, after the docking is done, he starts operating like this. So it's a master-slave principle. He gets a 3D vision. And most importantly, all these instruments, they have a lot of range of movements. 7 degrees of freedom. In normal laparoscopy, the instruments only go aage, piche, upar, niche. There is no circular motion. The wrist movement is not there because they are straight instruments. Here, the instruments, they can be twisted at the tip like this. They are not necessarily straight. So they can be twisted. So you have more range of movements, more degrees of freedom. These are some of the advantages of robotic surgery. Okay. The robo will remove the tremors. The tremors get corrected automatically. So if the surgeon's hands are shaking, the robo will eliminate the tremors. So the final movement is not going to be with tremors. All these nice advantages of robotic surgery. It is nothing but one step ahead. It's an enhanced laparoscopic only. Principally it is laparoscopic. But some of the problems of laparoscopy are corrected. 3D vision, more range of movements, more accuracy, more freedom of movements, wrist movements which are not there. Okay, this was about robotic surgery. So we will stop the class here. We meet again tomorrow, same time. I had scheduled a special class today at 8 o'clock, but I have posted, so postponed it to Saturday because I have a family emergency today. So I won't be taking the special class. Those of you who are on, the, on my profile would have gotten the notification that the special class is on Saturday, but other classes are as scheduled. So tomorrow and day after we meet again, same time 6.30 p.m. for session 4 and session 5 of general surgery. And Saturday again at 8 o'clock, we will have the special class. Okay, so thank you guys for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this class. We learned a lot of new things today. I spoke more because I believe laparoscopy is a little difficult topic. So, but I hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Do give a thumbs up in the end. If you like my video and if you wish to learn more from me on the plus platform please use my referral code 10 surgery that will get your discount and please follow me on telegram on unacademy amrit surgery okay guys so take care have a good evening and i see you tomorrow